shall i start ma'am yes dolly you can all right hello everyone i'm dolly from the nature's i team and i welcome all of you for today's beautiful session we the nature's i powered by wildlife art is the group of enthusiasts who wish to share our knowledge and experience with the world we strive to be informative and uh, educational content from tiny living world to the city dwellers our motto is to empower environmentalists everywhere aiming to create opportunity for young environmentalists and people related to our field through various program this webinar is one such where we will dig deep into some interesting topics like what does climate change and how the climate change is affecting us right what changes we can meet Uh, make in our day to day life that can impact climate change in positive way and much more so the speaker for today's webinar will be ms cynthia alexander who is the principal officer at seashells uh, energy commission she is currently working on the regulation of electricity sector as well as in the implementation of energy policies as well as strategies too all right now i request all of the participants to kindly mute yourself and if you have any doubt please drop down your questions in the chat box we will take all of your question after the presentation is over now over to you ma'am thank you dolly hi everyone thank you ma'am um, let me just uh, share my presentation can you please see it yes ma'am okay thank you so uh good evening once again and uh, i'm so happy to be part of today's uh, uh webinar that you have been hosting and it's very very uh, interesting to see how young enthusiasts are being a uh, trained to 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 do a to do a webinar to collect information to try to find a resource person and how how you learn to organize and uh, and execute a program and a, a program that you want to do like uh, you you have to have uh, different roles and responsibilities you have to work as a team and i'm very happy to see that and i wish you all a very good success and in everything you do so moving on to the presentation so today i wanted to talk about climate action and our contribution mm. so what i what you are seeing on the screen is the atmospheric carbon dioxide like as you can see in february 2022 it's 419.28 ppm parts per million while uh, in 2020 it was 414.34 and uh, this data has been uh, this is the updated data from uh, march 2022 the there is a website called um, uh, co2.org where we get this information why carbon dioxide is uh, sorry why carbon dioxide is given all this attention why because of its uh, greenhouse gas nature so was carbon dioxide not there before no it has always been there right so as a greenhouse gas what does carbon dioxide do carbon dioxide has the ability to capture the heat and retain it let's assume uh, we are in a air conditioned room we all want to feel the chillness of the air condition and uh, just because it is a bit cold we do not switch off the air conditioner what we do instead is we find a blanket or a or a jacket to make us feel more comfortable right so this is what earth has been doing all this while and that is why there is not yet another planet where we know life is known to be existing so what was what has been happening was there was heat from the sun and to all the planets but earth has become habitable because of the blanket the atmosphere that was covering and there were different gases present in the atmosphere and these gases has the ability to trap small amount of heat and this heat was keeping the living organisms comfortable where, where when we were living in earth right so okay so now we say carbon dioxide is a good one it protects us like a blanket it makes us feel comfortable it makes us 
uh, live a good life, everything. Then why, what happened? Uh, uh, what happened that we are talking about it now? The thing is, um, I, I guess you would have heard about the IPCC sixth assessment report last year during our August uh, month. Uh, um, so IPCC is a, is a intergovernmental panel for climate change, which is a worldwide organization that talks to different countries and tell what we have to do to keep our existence happening human to not to, not to go extinct. And the, the assessment report are different reports they send every year. And uh, uh, the last report was sent in uh, was the sixth assessment report where it says it was a code red for human, human uh, uh, race to be living. So what, what happened is they pinpointed that anthropogenic activities, which means human activities, have contributed to the carbon dioxide level to increase drastically over the last 50 years. So what you can see here is 419.28 used to be less than 200 some 100 years ago. And as carbon dioxide, the most second most abundant greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, we can directly relate it to the effect of uh, effect that is happening on the climate over the earth. So as, as the level of carbon dioxide keeps increasing, it traps more and more and more heat. It is like um, still staying in a air conditioned room, yet you have so many blanket on you, a quilt uh, or a, a woolen blanket, so that you are sweating and feeling hot inside. So what is the point of an air conditioning system when you are when you are covering yourself with such a, so many blankets, this is what is happening to earth. So when heat increases, what happens automatically? When heat increases, the temperature, the, the surface temperature of earth increases. As the surface temperature of earth increases, the ice melts, the sea level rises. So there are, these are, everything was interconnected and we are experiencing so much changes and also on the climate, the weather patterns or like, like they, we, we experience extreme weather conditions. So what you see on your um, right side, the corner, down corner is, what would be the uh, level of people who will be affected by sea level rising? So as you can see, all coastal regions will be affected. So the land mass will be shrinked. It will not happen in one day like an apocalypse and we just get moved away from it or get drowned. It, it happens slowly. You, 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 will, you will feel the effect, but you will not see the impact for, for some time. So what we do today contributes to what is going to happen, what has been proposed to be happen, and whether we are going to take action against it or we are not just going to sit there and watch it happening. So again, talking about this uh, sixth assessment report, why I keep on talking about the sixth assessment report is because that was the first ever report. Even though we have been talking about climate change since 1950s, after the Second World War and 70s during the Industrial Revolution, we, this is the first ever report that pinpointed and registered and recorded that human activities are the reason. So far, people have been having this dilemma of, is it naturally happening or is it uh, man-made? They were like uh, giving the benefit of doubt to the humans and they were not allowing uh, changes to happen in the, in the human uh, uh, part. But now this report identified that we are on code red. It's a red alert. Code red means there is fire, there is, uh, there is something that's life-threatening, right? So it's, it's, it's like a death bell ring. Yes, it is ringing. And what, what would happen is we have to do something to stop the temperature rise. If we go business as usual, as we are doing today, we are not going to stay forever on this year. There is no future for our future generations. There might not be no humans after certain years. So this is what it actually pinpoints. And that is why it is very important to uh, understand what kind of anthropogenic activities that we are contributing and what are the things that we can do? There are things like uh, uh, the government can say, stop doing this, stop doing that, make laws, make policies. And that is one aspect. But another aspect is as citizens, 
as a person living on this earth, what are we doing and what are we contributing? Okay, so action speaks louder than words, right? We can talk so many things, but if we don't do anything, nothing will change. It applies for uh, climate change also. One degree rise, a little one degree rise on the earth's surface temperature will be catastrophic for us. And even though the extinction of human beings will happen so far in the future, it will go make our life, the one who are living right now, miserable. I don't know where you all are coming from, but I, I'm damn sure that you all have experienced either flood or drought or too much high temperature, too hot temperature for sure. And you know, based on this IPCC report, it has been predicted that not one single child that is being born from 2022 is going to experience a normal climate in his or her life. How bad that sounds. Do we want this to happen to our future generations is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, there was an advertisement that they used to play some time ago on television. I don't know. I, I tried to get it, uh, but I could not uh, manage to do it. So what happened in that advertisement is a few adults were invited into a room where there are lots and lots of stuff, drawing stuff for them. So like about 15 of them, and then they were all asked to draw something as much as they can, as much as they can use. So they will be drawing like 10 or 15 pictures for like a half a day, drawing so many things, lots of stuff, using all the colors and paints and crayons and everything they were available. So once they have done the half day of uh, time, uh, they will be asked to sit aside and the room, the another door of the room will be opened where some children will be allowed, 15 number of children, girls and boys will be allowed inside the room. And they will be asked to draw something. But you know, the difference is like for the adults, they, ha they have been giving lots of uh, new stuff, new colors and everything. But these children will be asked to use only the leftover papers and the leftover colors. So they would come up with uh, uh, paintings and drawings still not having all the colors because the good colors were always used. Like for example, I cannot discriminate colors, but we can say that the, the most prominent colors like blue, green, yellow, everything was used. Only some dark colors like brown and black and gray left for them. If, if you find the crayons, you will see small pieces of mm, yellow or bright red or something while the black were a bit bigger. So after that, the adult were asked, what, what was their in inference? They said, if you have told me that the kids are going to come, we would have left some colors for them. We would have used only half of it. But why didn't you inform us? That's exactly where we are right now. What are we going to leave for our future generations that are not born yet? That are not born yet. So this is, this is the question that we have to ask ourselves. So we talked about carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. Where do these greenhouse gas come from? It comes from everywhere. It is in nature. If we live, we emit greenhouse gas, right? So our digestion happens, uh, 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 um, an organic uh, digestion happens, it releases um, greenhouse gas, right? So you can see like, um, if you see the picture, you can see that uh, electricity and heat contributes to the biggest contribution of man-made emission compared to buildings, food waste, other energy needs, transportation, industry, and agriculture and land. For example, uh, for example, we can say we can take agriculture. When we speak about agriculture, you will see uh, eat less meat as one of the thing to to become be a vegan, be a vegetarian. I have nothing against vegan or vegetarian or meat eating. This is personal choices of people. But taking it under the concept of climate change is something that we have to be very careful about. Uh, this is not a one shirt fits all approach. This is what we have to understand. If we have access to good food, we can choose. We, we have a choice to choose what we want to eat. But there are countries, there are people who do not have access 
who do not have uh, uh, enough economic background to offer what they want. So they have to rely on what they get. So there are different, the same applies for climate change aspect. We have to see this whole scenario in a holistic approach rather than uh, finding fault with people. Let's say you, you can see that the electricity is the biggest part. It is so easy to come up with a plan that says stop electricity generation. If this happens, are we ready to live in the dark? Are we ready to lose our comfort to be in a place where we have to use candlelight, where we have to use a hand fan? Are we ready to do that? No, we are not, right? So this is where science, technology, innovation comes in place, where we are trying to not reduce our level of comfort, not reduce what we have discovered, what we have innovatively improved ourselves, but to use it efficiently. So a climate change issue has environmental, uh, economical, social, and political aspect. So we need people. We need people to talk to each other. We need people to be friends with each other. We need people to, to see how they can address an issue. This is not one person solving all the issues. We don't need one Superman. Each one of us is a Superman or a Superwoman. We need to uplift each other, right? So there are lots of myths about climate change, right? Uh, like, for example, people think it is lifestyle changes that has contributed to climate, climate change. Some people, as I was telling you uh, before the sixth assessment report, human role on climate change was unproven for a long, long time. And people were using it for their benefit. Some people think we are in a hopeless situation. Whatever happens, let it happen. Some people think there is no option. We just have to go through what is happening. And there are some people who think, oh, there are people who are working on this. They will fix everything. Uh, so there are different kinds of perspectives for this. So in order to address this, there is only one way to, to overcome all these things. That is, we need to show. We need to share knowledge. We need to talk about it. We need to teach others. Education and awareness plays a very, very important role in this uh climate action so in 2015 there is this unfccc united nation uh, framework convention for climate change which has uh, um, added all the countries of the world and they do the conference of party parties cop i hope you have heard about uh, pop uh, conferences so there was this uh, 2015 cop which happened in paris where almost 130 countries committed themselves and signed an agreement called the Paris Agreement where they committed themselves to do sustainable goals so that they can keep the temperature of earth below 1.5 degrees Celsius. This is when the United Nations organizations came up with the 17 sustainable goals, as you can see on the screen, to make sure the human evolve with, with, with good uh, background. It is not like a rich people get something, poor people do not get something, or uh, the medium people or here and there. It, it should be for everyone, everyone, every human living on this earth. So out of the 17 goals, you can see that number 13 is climate action. Even though you see one particular goal is dedicated for climate action, it is intrinsically connected from one to 17. Anything you do has to have an impact, is having an impact on the climate and your action must make sure it does not make it worse. It brings it back. So in order to address on the climate, we have to have two approaches, either mitigate what has happened uh, or um, adopt to what has happened or mitigate to what will happen. So this is what, as you can see, there is no poverty, there is no hunger, good health. If you see all of them, they all have one or other way intrinsically interwoven to each other. Let's take number 14, which is life below water. Unless there is enough um, fish, enough uh, um, sea anemone, the, 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 the ecosystem of the sea is well maintained, the people on land will not be able to live properly because ocean or the biggest heat sink, they are the one which used to 
take all the heat that is trapped on the atmosphere and take it to them so that we as on the people on the land the living organisms on the land can experience a better weather condition so everything so clean affordable and clean energy contributes to life below water in a way that what you are using to make your energy if you are using coal if you are using diesel petrol nuclear power it has an impact of what kind of biodiversity we have under the ocean if we are talking about number 11 sustainable cities and communities it should the sustainability of a city comes from having affordable and clean energy having clean water and sanitation having good health and well being so these goals are ways for us to know whether we are living a good life or not and they are very much interconnected to each other we cannot say i i i work for uh, number 7 i don't have to worry about number 14 you cannot say that right and as you have seen in my previous slide electricity generation contributes to the biggest share of emissions and we all use electricity in different ways we will not be able to do perform we will not be able to join in a zoom session if we don't have electricity right so we all contribute to it and being uh reasonable being advocative and being responsible is very very important for that so this sustainable development goals are like a blueprint to achieve a better and sustainable future for all the people and we have a timeline for this if we don't stick to this timeline which is by 2030 we are we are in we will move into an unpredictable way of life we will not be able to say what will happen to us that that's how things are happening now so these goals can be achieved by small things small things like switching off your light when you are not in a room to complex planning of what kind of um what kind of uh, policy should i have for this big country like india so everything contribute everything is included in this sustainable development goals um since i am coming from a energy background i wanted to start with energy efficiency there is renewable energy and energy efficiency to contribute for addressing mitigation of climate change to be climate active to show your climate action however i know people have been listening about renewable energy everywhere um as i can as, uh, i just want to add one more thing i'm just randomly uh, hand picked things that i wanted to share with you today please feel free to make questions or uh, add your uh, inputs when we are discussing okay so as you can see in the very first part of my slide you see a cornetto ice cream right so i i hope you all uh, love ice creams and uh, i hope you all have this experience of opening an ice cream and removing the lid and seeing the little ice cream that is stuck to that lid and lick it before you throw have you done it or not um, but since we are not a very um, i am not able to see you i'm just go going to assume that you have done that and why we do that this is the first question we have to ask ourselves so we do it because we don't want that piece of ice cream to be wasted because we love ice cream so much and we don't like love, love it when it is being wasted to to be thrown away this is exactly the same concept for energy efficiency energy efficiency is there is energy coming from somewhere we have a switch at home when we switch it on the fan runs the air con runs the light comes on and everything but don't waste it use it efficiently this is all about energy efficiency so as you can see efficiency is an intelligent uh, laziness once again um what what are the ways that we can achieve this kind of energy efficiency we can all do it by ourselves like let's say when you are using air conditioning in a room if you leave all your windows and doors closed that is being energy efficient you know what happens the heat from outside will not come inside so that your air condition does not have to uh reduce the temperature more so it works efficiently so as simple as that also when you are using a fan and not using an air conditioner if you leave your windows open you are allowing natural ventilation you are using natural lighting so this way you can balance and be energy efficient so this is one simple thing which can contribute 
from you as a climate action for what the world is experiencing. So as you can see on the right side, insulation. Insulation in buildings, insulation in rooms, insulation in pipes where to, to make sure uh, the amount of heat that we are heating or cooling is reduced helps in energy being energy efficient. So it uses a less amount of electricity or heat. And this way we don't have to burn fossil fuel or um, uh, use more electricity and pay more. So double glazing is a kind of thing. Like nowadays we have seen all kinds of buildings comes with lots and lots of glass walls, glass windows, uh, glass beams and everything. So double glazing is a technology that is available to be a, like a, on the glass so that the heat, because glass has the ability to absorb heat from the sun and trap it inside. Uh, so in order to avoid this, we can use double glazing where heat is reflected outside and doesn't come inside. And then your air conditioner does not have to work double strength to make you feel comfortable inside a room. Adding a water, water saving device in your tap, uh, whether it's in, on the shower, on the toilet, on the sink where we wash vessels, plays a very important role. This is a small action that you can do that can contribute to climate action. Using renewable energy technologies, yes, it's fantastic, but it also comes with an investment cost. Definitely your return on investment will be very, very low, like three years, five years, seven years. And after that, you will be having the, 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 the source, uh, resource free of cost but it does come with the investment cost. As I said, switching off, unplugging an appliance or simple things that we can do. How many of you have this habit of watching television at night and then just use the remote and just go to sleep with the phones? You, you just keep it on charging and just keep using it, drain the battery completely. So simple things like that, which, which comes from the behavior of a person is contributing to the climate action. These are the actions we need to take. I know one person taking one small action might sound tiny, um, uh, it, 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 it will insignificant in a way, but one person is multiplied by the total population. Imagine about it. One person, one small thing, like switching off your TV with a switch and removing the plug. How many, like one person, not one person multiplied by millions of others contribute to climate action, right? Using a public transport. I have a, I, I will be talking about transport later, but transportation. How many of us want to, um, or using cars only for ourselves? Okay, when we are using cars, are we carpooling? Are we, are we like uh, choosing the people who live in our vicinity to go to the same region? These kind of simple things contribute to climate action. As I said, not everyone can do everything that we know, but we all can do something about it. This is, this is what matters. So uh, when you are building, a, designing a building, when you are building, you can, you can, or when you are living in a room, you can plan yourself and contribute to your climate action to address climate change. You, you, when you are choosing an electrical appliance, what kind of electrical appliance you are using contributes to a climate action? What kind of transportation you are using? contribute to climate action. So as you can see, uh, Sir David Attenborough said once, don't waste electricity, don't waste paper, don't waste food. Live the way you want to live, but just don't waste. This is a very, very important piece of advice, I would say, for anyone who don't care about environment, who does not care about the money they have to pay for electricity or energy, who doesn't get involved in all of this, so what's happening in the world? Just don't waste, it's so simple, right? How many of us go to a, go to a restaurant and buy something uh, just because we want to try it and then we don't like it, we just throw it. How many of us just buy stuff because it's being sold? You know, just, Let's, let us be aware of what we are buying and what we are uh, using it for. Uh, am I wasting it or not? That's the only question. You can buy anything you want, but just don't waste it. Either you use it or try to give it to someone who will use it. So now I want to start with the climate action where we can talk about internet. Okay, so internet is uh, what we are 
what is keeping us connected today, right? In terms of greenhouse gas, internet use accounts for 3.7% of the global emissions, which is equivalent to all the air traffic in the world. Can you believe that? And this figure is expected to be doubled by 2025, excluding the COVID-19 effect. What are we doing? Just because we have free internet, we are, we are misusing it. Because I, I don't know, you know this, so one Google search is equivalent to 0.2 grams of carbon dioxide, which means when you, when you say, um, when you type, um, uh, let's say, what do we type more often? Some spelling or something, you, you just type uh, somebody's name. Let's say we type um, uh, Amitabh Bachchan on the Google. It, go, it, it uses lots and lots of energy from the electricity to do the search for you to give the answer in fraction of seconds. These servers of Google and other big uh, search engines are, far, are, are using ample amount of energy to give you the result. So, uh, but you know, we, we take it so comfortable. We, we so okay, this, there is free Wi-Fi here. There is free internet, unlimited internet. The environmental impact of video streaming, you can see from, this, uh, from the data that they have been shared by the EC Eco tips. Netflix or streaming online, one third of the demand comes from this uh, streaming online, the other from social media, and one third from pornography. Can you believe that? So these are the things that are keeping, keeping us busy all the time. This is not about telling you not to go watch something, not to learn something, not to keep yourself entertained. This is about how responsible are you to do these things. We can download and listen. One simple thing, one better climate action is, we don't know, like this Zoom meeting, you, can, you have to watch it live. But a Netflix movie can be downloaded and watched. A YouTube can be downloaded and watched. You know, things like that. You, you balance. You think about, okay, now I have time. Now I have internet, so I can keep it downloaded. Sometimes you will be in a hurry. You will need an information very urgent. Like you are doing a homework for your class or an assignment, and you will need immediate information. That time you cannot be like, I am very... Uh, pro-environmentalist, so I will only download and watch. This is not that. This is about taking responsibility and making clarified decisions for yourself. Okay, this is how human induced. This is what I was talking about, anthropogenic activities. We don't know ourselves that a small Google search is contributing this much of emission because we are not, we think we are not part of it. We think we are not directly involved in it. This is what the sixth assessment report talks about. Small things, small things that we do at home. So I hope this information, uh, you will be able to digest them and uh, try to see when and where possible, how you can do it as a good action than just talking, okay? So as you can see, <clears throat> Red, uh, environmental impact on energy is reduced energy demand, reduced carbon dioxide emissions. Health impact of an electricity, uh, electricity use is reduced cold related illness because of air conditioners and reduced cost for the services, uh, health services. Housing, if you have a building that is energy efficient, you have better quality housing, better reduced operating cost for the housing providers. Like from India, we are from different parts of India and we have different types of climatic regions, right? Tamil Nadu is subtropical, North India is temperate. We have uh, warm and cold uh, seasons, winter seasons, ice seasons and everything. So depending on where you live, how, how you behave yourself, how you arrange yourself contributes to it. Business and economy, all these things contribute to new job creation, less illness related the way you 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 sorry the way you are present in your room for example sorry um let's say your classroom for example the, the there is 8 hours of uh, time that you are spending in your classroom if your classroom is not properly ventilated if you don't have enough windows if you do not have uh, right sized air conditioners 
you will feel um, very unproductive. You will become unproductive. You will feel lazy. You will feel lethargic because the thermal comfort of this room is not good for you. So everything, as I said from the beginning, contributes to each other. And everything needs energy also, whether it's a fan, whether it's a, whether it's a construction part, whether it's a, your lighting, you need electricity for that and you need energy for that, right? So what you can see downstairs is, um, down right is uh, energy efficiency labels. When you are purchasing an electrical appliance, go look for the label. Identify what kind of ranking it is, what kind of rating it is, and why it is on the rating, and is it contributing to you? Sometimes the, the best products are more expensive compared to, the, compared to the inefficient products. So it is very difficult uh, uh, to, I, um, to, to see, oh my God, I don't have that much money in my hand, so let, let me buy something that's cheap. It's so easy to make the decision, but the, the cheap money that you are using to purchase your electrical appliance today is contributing to your little amount every month that goes to your electricity bill and the little amount that goes to your health bill because of a bad thermal comfort in your room. You understand? So everything is interconnected. Being informed, learn about it. We are living in an age of information. You can get information about anything, anywhere you want. You don't have to pay for it. There are lots of information available everywhere. Talk to an expert. Try to ask more questions before you choose something for you. The second thing, um, it's not the second thing. Another thing that I want to talk is this consumer behavior. We are the consumers. What are we choosing? Are we choosing products that keeps that makes us happy for one day, one evening? Or are we making uh, informed choices that last with us? As you can see, a bouquet. A bouquet, oh, a bouquet is very beautiful. It's so romantic. It's so happy. It makes you so happy to receive a very nice bouquet from a very nice person from your life, right? But what do they contribute? It matters. Like, let's say, for example, sometimes... Uh, even let's take Tamil Nadu, for example. If I am getting a bouquet in Chennai, that bouquet might not come from Chennai. It would have been planted somewhere in the hills, Western Ghats, and it would have been shipped all the way to Chennai. Imagine for, for something that will dry in half a day. We have, uh, we have consumed something that was grown somewhere, shipped where it was giving carbon emissions, where it, people were working on it to... to, to to take it from the plant, to ship it, to keep it cold, to keep it fresh, uh, air conditioning systems, and then come to me, come to my hand, and it stays there for half a day. I'm not saying never get a bouquet, but choose wisely which are the most important occasions that you need the bouquet. That this is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes instead of a bouquet, a, a in-house plant can stay with you forever. It lives with you. It can live with you for. 15 years, you know, nobody knows. So there are occasions that you can choose or do your shopping locally. Try to buy products that are available from your region. Don't go for something that has been imported if not necessary. So this contributes to climate action. There are tea bags that we use. You, we all know how important tea is in our life or coffee for that instance. But when you take a tea bag, green teas, we say we want to live a healthy life. We, we think about green teas. But you know, a tea bag contains a plastic package that is not recyclable, that is not degradable all the time, that contains microplastic, and that when dipped in very hot water, releases toxins that affect our health. And more of, most importantly, uh, when, when something, when the powder is kept inside, it is adulterated with leaf dust rather than the leaf itself. So this is a business tactic to attract us. Choose powder that you can make decussion with. If you are at home, try to choose, make the difference. Again, this is not about, oh, I am going to avoid tea bags forever in my life. This is not about that. We are not in such a position yet. We cannot avoid tea bags at the moment, but try to change. 
she change your priorities if if i am making tea at home let me brew it at home if i am in a meeting if i am in a conference if i am in a uh, somewhere out of my house it's okay to have a tea bag balance yourself this is what climate action is all about food waste we have spoke about it food is wasted everywhere we buy food because we have the money to pay for it here after try to see if think about it whether you really need it or not or be a person who will not waste it if it is if it is remaining it's okay be a person who will take it back pack it and freeze it and then use it again when you need it or please give it to someone who needs it be that person who do not just throw it away because you have just paid for it we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly but we need millions of people doing it imperfectly do it today if you can't do it tomorrow that's completely fine don't put yourself in an anxious situation of oh my god i i am not able to do this oh i'm i'm doing bad to them no it's not like that you are doing the best with what you can with what you have as you can see on the picture the sea starts here whatever you put on your sewage or put on your dustbin eventually eventually will end up in the ocean you know earth is made up of uh, three parts of water and one part of land so no matter how uh, tightly packed and how big our uh, our population is in a way or another unless something is burnt and uh, added to the atmosphere it is going to end up in the ocean balloons for example what is the use of balloons try to be balloons are being used as decorative part for parties as i said mm, try to see the the maximum benefit of it how come how can you use it having having balloons just because you can offer it is not a good way of using balloons and these small pieces of balloons and microplastic that i have been talking about they all end up in the ocean for the aquatic animals to rely on them to eat there was a there was a documentary called albatross made by uh, sir david attenborough uh, it is about an island very far from australia a remote island where the birds the albatross the sea birds live there and they have this uh, peculiar way of living where they make they 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 once they the bird, the the kids hatch from the eggs they stay they don't move anywhere while the mother goes and feed for three months or six months and then come back and give all the digested food to the kids and after some time they have to start uh, doing their own uh, uh, hunting for food this is how they live and you know what happened recently because of the plastics they that the mother birds were mistakenly eaten for uh, thinking of it as a aquatic animal as a jellyfish or as a small fish these birds are dying because they cannot digest it properly the mothers feed their babies with poison and they end up as a flightless bird and if they cannot fly they cannot get their food because this island do not have any food they have to fly and go and hunt for themselves and uh, i think this is available on netflix also um so there are there are like we are not reinventing the wheel i am not talking about something that we have not done before that this is very important so our behavior contributes to our actions think about it be think twice before you do something small and the most important one plastics plastics are not bad as a chemical engineer i am saying this plastics have saved the world from lots of things the it it has given access to the people to one complete new avenue where all the people have access to lots of stuff with us right now but there is this single use plastic which contributed to lots of waste it has been estimated that the waste the the, the amount of plastic is going to exceed the amount of fish that are in the ocean by 2025 plastics were very badly regulated for the past years there was no proper governance no proper tracking system no regulation in place and it is still a broken system i know india has stopped use of single use plastic banned it recently 
and uh, even amazon was told not to use single use plastics for packaging but still we are creating lots of uh, pollution using the uh, alternatives for plastic let's say for example uh, we don't take our own water bottle we are feeling thirsty and we go buy a water bottle we drink the water like in half an hour what happens to that bottle that you have so this is what people are talking about these companies do not manufacture what they do not sell water they manufacture plastic bottles plastic is one of the most energy intensive industries in the manufacturing se sector each bottle is already the bottle is a waste and the bottle is not recyclable and the bottle is contributing to climate uh, change but making this bottle also is having a very big emission factor associated with that greenhouse gas emissions from plastics are accelerating the climate breakdown and definitely threatening our ability to maintain a survivable climate if we are not going to do anything in regards to the plastic it is going to eat us for sure because plastic will be there forever not us plastic bread bag plastic containers plastic straws plastic packaging materials cutlery shopping bags everything you can see the bird the sea bird is thinking of something as a the small piece of plastic it is thinking something to be eaten what is so hard for us to bring our own bag wherever we go to bring our own water bottle wherever we go i was uh, i was in a five star hotel um uh, some time ago like four years ago maybe it was a five star hotel where we had a conference and we were invited and it was uh, it was my first experience with a experiencing a five star service for life you know everything was so cheap so free there because the 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 fee the fee for the room was so expensive we had like uh, five kinds of coffee three kinds of tea uh, every day the snacks and everything will be coming to your room and then you will have a jacuzzi inside hot water you will have shower you will have a washing machine you will have everything but what was not given free of cost for that money was water you can have wifi in five devices everything was there but water was to be paid it was in jamaica by the way i was it was it was like you can see the reality in there everything was free everything was there you know the five types of coffee you can have espresso you can have uh, um other uh, other other kinds there is a machine for making espresso coffee everything was there and you know the espresso is given in small bags the teas different kinds of teas five kinds of teas were given in tea bags you see the luxury that i have to experience come up with the cost not just the money that i am referring to but the environment that we are living in the climate that we are experiencing and are we going to continue to do this our planet cannot afford plastics in a business as usual scenario 100% i am not talking about like you know you you say i'm i i don't like plastic so let me go take out all the plastic from my house and throw it away no that's not what we are meaning if you already have a plastic bottle use it to its whole life cycle don't buy another one because it does it looks better than the one you have don't change it because somebody else have a much better bottle than you have this is what we are talking about use it effect effectively use it efficiently and don't buy a new one green washing green washing is the term people use uh, to make products or sustainable or eco friendly but when they are not really let me tell you an example for this mm. uh recently uh in february european union have declared nuclear energy and natural gas as green energy this is called green washing they were comparing this to the coal and the diesel and petrol plants and they are saying the amount is uh, the amount of emission is really less so it is a green source of energy which is not it comes with a cost natural gas is a fossil fuel it's a hydrocarbon it still contributes to emissions of carbon dioxide and methane nuclear energy what about safety of nuclear energy yesterday was the fukushima uh, anniversary yesterday you know about the day, uh, right the 
leakage of uh, radiation what are we talking about we do not this this world do not have a safe disposal of nuclear energy yet the european union has declared it as clean source of energy so this is what we call greenwashing money plays a very important role the powerful people just because they have the power or trying to keep people in a way that uh, that is not right people have to know about this and talk about this solar energy wind energy biomass cannot be compared with nuclear energy or gas natural gas or you know sometimes the products that used to be red in color or blue in color they just make a new new cover for it which is green in color and they say it's a eco friendly product no it's not eco friendly as such you have to read it you have to read the ingredients you have to read what it is made from where it is coming from then only you will be able to understand whether this product is really eco friendly or not try to avoid small packet of things if you will be using it more like for example sachet of shampoo is bad when you know you will be taking head, head you will be washing your hair for every week by try to go for a bigger bottle you know things like that refillable bottle this this is what we have to do washing powder soaps what we are using packaging contributes to lots of waste pollution and this pollution in turn are contributing to the climate change because you have to manufacture them somewhere right that's why so as you can see in the picture one more lane our countries are making eight lanes road and 15 lane road why we don't look at public transportation why don't we make public transportation an efficient one a better one an improved one you know 30 people can go on one bus but they need 30 cars 30 or even uh, 10 cars or 30 bikes right so these are these are things that the government also has to do but since we are talking about our contribution about climate i am not touching those uh, big topics that's uh, that will be there for another day knowing what is right is not as important as doing what is right what you can see from the figure is this is a uh, from the uh economic world economic forum where they have uh, they have um, estimated the amount of uh, shipping purchase online purchases and they have seen, seen that um, a parcel has to be delivered on one day you know we have no easy return one day delivery you don't have to go out there is always this so if you use code, coupon code this you will get uh, another 5 rupees off you know you 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 are not allowed to think you are allowed to you are just you just you are so attracted to make decisions and based on that the number of delivery vehicles is going to increase 36 percentage this increase is going to contribute 6 megaton 6 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions in 2030 and it is going to create such a congestion on the road i hope all of you are experiencing traffic uh, jam every day in your life right so what made this traffic jam happening everywhere there are small roads but bigger cars and each car has only one person and we all have to go to the office at the same time everything starts from 9 o'clock in the morning and it ends at 6 o'clock in the evening how what are we going to do to improve our way this covid situation has showed us that we can work from home but is it being taken seriously is it being considered what if we all work from home there might not be need for lots of big buildings and offices so i am not saying just because you work from home you don't need an office it's not like that it is about optimizing the need optimizing the the time you have to be on road optimizing your emissions optimizing which is important and which is not this is what we are talking about are we one one parcel that i i i order and then one parcel that you order each one of us order one parcel and it is going to emit carbon dioxide in total and we are going to experience the effect of it you know there was a study that was conducted which said people who when they used to go and purchase stuff was having less emission than doing online shopping and also as humans human psychology when you when you put an effort to go and purchase something you 
you took very good care of it nowadays since you are we, you are receiving it so easily and cheaper you don't give importance to it and that is why lots of waste is ending up in the landfill we have to think about this so we i tried to uh, uh, mix and match some points which i think that we are using in everyday life one thing that i have uh, understood from i am not a person who is doing all this all the time i was like uh, you know when i was growing up i was waiting for the day when i will have my own air conditioner when i will have my own car i was a person i was a girl who had um, who had visions of having a big house lots of stuff lots of toys uh, fur toys for example or even um, having lots of uh, uh, utensils for example for my kitchen i had all these dreams but once i moved into the sector when i learned all this i i i become a minimalist i i i stop buying things just be for the sake of buying but i used to buy a lot so i think education and awareness plays an important role where it helps us to decide what we want you know we have a comfort level that we don't want to compromise we have a luxury that is up there so when we are in a comfort level when we are in a very down level we look up for the comfort level and when we are in the comfort level we look for the luxury level let's say uh, i travel by plane i travel in the economy class that is what i can afford but when i go inside a plane when i see the business class or the first class it it automatically i feel oh i should travel like this once right so i see that the luxury of people the luxury of having high tech devices high tech services new mobile phones technologies and everything that is luxury for us we are unable to distinguish what is our need and what is, what do we really want we see that i need to earn money to go to that level that's the only aspect that that comes to our mind because that's how we are shown everything we go to a movie the movies have the things like that we watch a series we watch an advert everywhere we are told okay there is still for me to improve myself there is still for me to reach there is still for things there that are there that i have never used in my life that i want to use but we don't know whether it's really useful for us if whether we really want it or not that's what matters so now we have money against everything we want to earn lot of money to go for this 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 and this but let's put environment in the place of money are we going to live a life that is sustainable are we going to leave this earth a better place or are we going to contribute to what we have we are seeing the center of the presentation all the waste you you know amaze it was there was a there was an article about amazon dumping all the electronic waste that was not sold during the past years which has not which 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 still can be repaired and used but they just throw it in the landfill and there is a case going on with that when there is no demand there will not be a supply right but what is a demand demand is the desire to have a good anything a good it could be food it could be a phone it could be a pillow it could be anything you want and an ability for the person to pay for it anything that cannot be offered technically should not be a demand right we cannot afford our planet for anything this is what matters this is all about climate action and what you know about climate change when you are talking don't be judgmental don't be superlative don't try to force it on people do what you can by yourself let's say for example you learnt about the uh, air conditioning system efficiency and then your parents are buying one or your your house owner is buying it you go and contribute you can tell them but if they are not listening to you you cannot force them that should not add anxiety to you but when you are taking the decision be aware of it be informed of it show the impact show the effects don't just talk show it to people learn be inspiring and be empathetical unless we are empathetical we will not be able to do anything otherwise we will end up putting pressure on ourselves and we will see oh my god i i am telling you all this and uh, you all are going to suffer we cannot do that albert einstein said that the world is not destroyed by those who do evil 
but by those who watch them without doing anything. Do what you can. Is all about climate action. We know uh, there is a uh, youth um, uh, youth uh, groups, uh, forums everywhere. Do what you can. Um, whatever is in your control is what matters. Don't go beyond your control. There are so many things that uh, as, a, as a government has to be done, as a citizen has to be done. As a, Let's say, for example, America is the biggest city, emitter. China is the biggest emitter. But India and Indonesia and this country like Seychelles, where I'm living, are asked to do contribute for climate change. If you think, if you compare it in that way, you will feel very angry about it. Don't, don't look for anything. Yes, humans have caused this. But we are in a position that we can do something about it. And let's do it. Nothing, nothing will go waste. Nothing will go waste. This is what I, I, I have learned and I follow and I want you to follow also. Learn about it. Learn about some things and become an expert in that thing. And try to, try to use it for the be benefit and betterment of the society where you are living. Climate action is needed today to ensure our youth to have a safe, just and healthy future. We don't want the future generation to end up experiencing extreme weather events uh, or uh, um, uh, to live in fear of what will not what of not knowing what will happen next. So try to avoid the energy vampires. Unplug your appliances. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but can be wasted. And I thank you for listening to me all this while. If you have any questions, just let me know, please. So, yeah, yeah it was very uh, beautiful uh, thing that you said. And it was very motivating also. Uh, do what you can do. Um, yeah. Um, my question is that, um uh, how green is electrical uh, electric vehicles are means we are talking about green uh, vehicles and uh, all that but how green they are we are uh, changing from fossil fuel to electric yeah okay green vehicles are green as you said yes but where is that electricity coming from if you are going to plug it from your house it is going to be from a fossil fuel from a coal or diesel right Having solar stations for electric charging makes it more sustainable than taking it from home. But that needs a transition period. We cannot have everything to start with when we want. Let's change the vehicle first, which is working on electric electricity. So there is a different kind of emission, right? Emission from electricity generation is different from emission from an engine coming or automobile engine. So let's make the change first. We are on the transition period. Period. Let's give it some time, but try to work towards solar ports for charging stations. You know, parking is a very important issue in the world right now. Uh, there are there are, there should be policies from the government or for policies from uh, from even the car car manufacturers or importers or whoever it is that that they make uh, solar charging stations and whoever has an electric vehicle has priority access to it. You know, these kind of things can make it more greener. But electric vehicles are a fantastic alternative that we need to transit now. Yeah. And, uh, and another is that, uh, is it really our choice to shift to a sustainable thing? Because most of the, we are motivated by advertisement. We are motivated by, you know, what is trending. Like I'm a student now, what next I have to do? I'm motivated by the people who are doing around me. Then how can I make this individual choices by all by self? It's, it's very a difficult part because- It is indeed difficult. But what I would like to say is, if you are being motivated by what is around you, what can you do to motivate others around you? is what we have to think about. It's not an easy task. As I told you, when we grow up, we, 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 we as a student especially, you always, um, you always have this aspiration to have something that you don't have right now, right? Yes, yes, yes. That is, so, yeah. 
that, that i know that is what keeping the business running for all the all the people that is where the demand is coming from they make you see things that you don't have all the time and you make you feel an hunger for it, it cre it's creating an appetite inside you but you have to have your thoughts well organized and write about it write about it. whether check whether is it really needed or not you know in the 1970s and 80s when they were making a product they they were advertising it saying this will last forever in your life buy this this is how they used to uh, advert but the, the evolution of advertisement has changed now you know last year i bought a samsung samsung s21 fan edition and within 3 months there is a uh, there is a s20 i bought a s20 and there is a s21 after that and you know it makes me feel guilty it is just three months that I uh, ago that I, I spent that much money. But if I put another thousand rupees, I would have got a much better version. So this is what they are trying to put in our mind, which is which we have to fight against. That is why we are eco warriors. That's why we are different from other people. That's why we are going to do for motivating others. This is very important. It's hard. I agree. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I see some questions uh, on the chat. There is one from uh, Nish, Nishta. So the more fast the internet speed is, the more effect it has on the environment CO2 emission. Uh, not necessarily. Using internet is having that em emission impact on the environment, definitely, because it uses lots of electricity to get the in, to, to find the information that you're looking for and give it to you within fraction of seconds. These servers take lots of information. Google is one of the company that goes towards sustainability that has server stations that are working on renewable energies, but still it's the, it, it, it uses the highest. So we have to be aware of what, what, what am I using this internet uh, efficiently or not? Is it really important right now or can I download it and use it later? Sometimes, you know, we just stream YouTube music and listen to it and while we work, we have apps that do that. So don't try to use that. Try to download and keep a folder for us with all our albums and uh, favorite songs. You know, small things. I'm, I'm not talking about not using internet at all. You understand? That this, uh, but internet, anyway, you when you use, it uses lots of electricity. And there are different um, uh, search engines that are using less emission. You can Google them again, and then you can use them also. And there is a second question from uh, Milan Culeri. Is climate change about individual choice or economic policy? Both, not just economical policy, social, environmental, political, economical policy. It's, it's all, it's all. There are things, when, when it is a country's policy, we all eventually adhere to it because it's a law in a country, it's a regulation in a country, so we will not use it. Uh, let's say, for, let me tell you, for example, in Seychelles, we have minimum energy performance standards for electrical appliances, which means I showed you some electrical uh, energy labels, right? So there are some rating of the label which will not be allowed into Seychelles, which is a law for us. So when it, when it is a law, automatically the people have to choose only from what is available in the market. That is a policy change. Individual change is choosing, there are three products, uh, uh, which is five star, four star, and three star available. Choosing the five star is an individual choice. It could be expensive than the four star and the three star, but still I, am, I, am, I, I save some money to contribute for the five star product so that I reduce, reduce the impact that I create on my bill every month. And Radhika, well delivered job, thank you. There is a question, we are checking our, are we checking our resources that are used to make renewable energy? I don't understand this question. Can you please clarify more, Nishta? Yes, ma'am. There was this question, uh, like the renewable resources which we are uh, using, like uh, we are using mm -hmm. solar panels and we are using uh, wind mm -hmm. energy and mm -hmm. the things which are we are using to make those solar panels and then uh, those waste collects and how it enters the environment. Like, 
are we checking it? Uh, are there policies that like working on it, uh, tracking it like something? Like okay, you, you, you are right. We make the most, the, to, in order to make clean energy, we use the unclean part of it to manufacture them. That's right. You know, private sector do not, do not bother about environment. For them, environmental issue is a, some, not for all, but definitely for most, profit comes first and then environment can be a byproduct of it. There is nothing wrong in it because we all come to make money when, you, when, we, when we start to do a business. That is why there needs to be a good governance and regulations in place so if they just follow the rules, automatically their product by product is always environmental oriented. What, what is important is we, we do resource assessment before we choose what kind of renewable energy is more popular in the region and what can be used. But what about these products after being manufactured, after being used, what are they going to do after their lifetime? is also something that is not very well taken. But I think research and development part, like from academic point of view, there are some researchers ongoing, but on a, on a commercial point of view, unfortunately, it's not. It's not to the level that we expect it to happen. Okay, well, thank you. And I will uh, like to say that it was an amazing session. Uh, I have attended many other sessions like on consumerism and what... Uh, we can do uh, as a person, as an individual. And this was actually the kind of session which uh, I uh, heard that it's, you don't have to uh, quit everything. You don't have to like uh, stop doing everything, just make small choices. And that was uh, very wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Just be aware of what you're doing. One day you will be able to do the other day you will not be able to do. Don't worry about the day that you cannot do something, but to work on the day that you can, you are able to do something. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any more questions? So you, you, you say you are all environmental enthusiasts. Can you all tell me one thing that you do, one small thing that you do at home to make yourself as an environmentalist? Ma'am, I have a doubt. Uh, yes. So we were talking, uh, so we were talking about uh, search engines using like um, giving out a lot of emissions. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, I use Ecosia. How is it different from the Google search? Okay, I don't know about Ecosia, but definitely if it is a better site, it will be definitely the amount that uh, the amount of emission could be a smaller, uh, consider considerably smaller con compared to Google. They claim to be a green website. Green website, yeah. It, it, it would be, it would be, it would not be the same as Google, definitely. It would be reduced, but still, as I said, it is not 100% zero emission. Yeah. Yes. There are lots of websites that are green, uh, that uses uh, green um, uh, sources, but you have, you have to do the research and learn about it because I don't know this uh, website that you have, you are talking about, but uh, yes, it, there are, there are lots of websites that are, that are using less uh, energy. Sure. I'll look into it. So you can just give me one thing that you do at home that makes you environmental friendly. You can talk. Let me start. Uh, um, for the past uh, 10 years, we have never purchased gift wrappers. We use only newspapers for gift wrapping. So like that, simple things. Just unmute yourself and talk. Uh, yes, ma'am. I have uh, written in the chat box too. And there is also this one thing uh, that we are not using the firecrackers on occasions. Very good. Okay. For many that's years, good. like it is like uh, around 10 to 15 years now. Mm. That's, that's good. Thank you.
So this is so, such a small group and yet nobody is talking. Ma'am. Students. In my house, we stop uh -huh. using uh, like plastic bags and all to collect our waste, the garbage. Mm -hmm. Instead, we use old newspaper to make garbage bags. What about the organic waste, food waste? Even the organic waste. We use a few more newspapers so that it holds better, but we use newspapers itself. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I also personally avoid plastic, using plastics and um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically plant trees around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that we can do it in India, which um, which um, which uh, like from my experience, you know, when we go to the big uh, textiles or uh, jewelry shop like. Uh, Chennai silks or like that. We were always like uh, fighting for the bags. I, I used, we say, I have spent 4,000 rupees. Why don't you give me four bags? You know, things like that. But nowadays I don't do that. I know this is a waste. We, we just get the bag and just keep it uh, in a box and it, it occupies some space. So we don't do that anymore. So these small things that we used to think, oh, I should get more. We turn into, no, I don't need it anymore. Like that. I, I guess uh, there are no really this session was very great and uh, thank you very really happy to know about all those things from as an individual how could we contribute uh, and these so much we can do <laughs> yeah there is much more we can do I, I just to, uh, to be within time I just picked a, one or two from here and there but you can you can learn more about it. You can, as I said, this is age of information. You have access to everything. But choose what you want to learn about. Choose what you want to know more about. Don't let yourself distracted by what they show you around. Yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. Thanks a lot for spending your invaluable time with us. Thank you, Bharat. And could you please add on about how could we start at a college level? Now we had planned to have a herbal garden and a butterfly garden, a self-sustaining pond ecosystem or a sort of things like that. Then what are the things we can do, ma'am, as, as a college level? As a college level, you can do lots of education and awareness for school kids and for public people, for uh, teachers, for office goers everyone like you you can plan um, because i think there is a gap between the re real information available and people what people know um, you know, in the 1950s there are lots of people who have spoken about climate change who have spoken about uh, renewable energies but there are there is this gap which is not filled because of people who are making money from fossil fuel imagine imagine let's just imagine what will happen if all the countries go towards a sustainable energy generation? I'm not talking about anything else, only electricity. Let's say all the countries go towards a, a renewable energy generation. What would be the status of UAE? What would be the status of Ukraine and Russia? There will not be any war there right now. Right? There are people making money out of it and they don't want others to stop it what if we become self-sustainable what if energy security is a priority which can contribute to food water uh, energy nexus there are so many things we talk about like let's say for example there is world trade organization and there is a united nations organization in order to be part of world trade organizations you have to commit yourself legally but in order to be part of united nation organizations it's a voluntary this, this shows the difference between how money is made more important, how things are more made more valuable than the planet, the people, and the love and kindness, for instance. We, we have to learn about this. We have to be the change.
it will take some time for others to see the change on us but we have to be happy within ourselves with what we have to show okay okay there is this way of living where people can do it join forums join groups follow people who do these things uh, for try to see how innovatively lots of people are doing like for example i saw last week uh, in trichy bharati of trichy right so in trichy there was there was a, this uh, a, a lady who is a housewife who making juice from a bicycle like uh, if somebody can uh, drive the bicycle it automatically runs a mixer and makes juice and uh, she is making a sustainable juice market there people are very innovative people are trying there are lots of lots of people who are doing everything but they are bits and pieces try to find uh, try to organize them together like minded people like minded forums so that you can take your news to everyone money is important money i'm i'm not saying don't do anything for money we your time is money your your work is money you if you are learning something or if you are becoming an expert you have to make sure you get the money for it but is that money if that money is coming on the cost of the environment on the cost of the planet is what you have to check yeah so that's that's it yeah uh, i would i mean uh, this is my last question and then yeah uh, what uh, what would be your perspective uh, about uh, yeah green energy or green future how you look future what is your vision about future i want leaders to take the lead you know the leaders all the leaders they they should not be just the puppets of rich people rich uh business organizations the leaders can make a difference and the, the people have chosen these leaders for a reason right so this whoever is the leader has been chosen by the people so they have to make the lead and they can they can make the world a better place they can bring back humanity and uh, the hu- sustainability of human race no I mean, loss uh, uh, is will help i am uh, particularly asking about how the green future would look like means um, if the change has done what would be the changes means uh, in that perspective means emission uh, i just want the emissions to be reduced you know i am part of the i am part of my country's uh, uh, greenhouse gas inventory team where we are a very small island i don't know if you have googled the seychelles we are tiny islands where sometimes we are put as dot on world map okay i am part of this greenhouse gas inventory and the amount of uh, emission that you are calculating from what we have a uh, small diesel power plant here in seychelles is phenomenal and uh, i wonder how it would be for india i have read reports for india but i have never participated in in that for india so i was comparing it china america like you know uh, the emission have to be reduced whatever we do if we cut out the emissions it is a, it you know what happened during covid times germany was flying empty planes to australia and to move other other uh, regions big cities you know why the reason for that was in order to not lose their air space if they have not traveled and parked in that place that would have been taken by the airport and given to somebody else this 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 doesn't make sense to me there was only this air from lufthansa from germany that has a come up and agreed and uh, told everyone that we did that there are other aircraft that did the same but they have not come open i i i do not understand why this is needed what is so important like this is what i am talking about profit over planet 
there were no customers for them there were no nobody traveling yet the plants were the planes were uh, emit, making emissions Dolly sister, do you uh, want to add on anything? You are asking me, Bharat? Uh, no. So if there is nothing, I guess uh, I can go, right? I, am, I think uh, she has some problem with the network. She has left the meeting. I oh, think so. okay, okay, okay. Okay. Our coordinator. Still stressing for her. Roshini, yes, let's go ahead. Okay. Okay, uh, so on behalf of Nature's Eye, I would like to thank ma'am for such wonderful session and also all the participants for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Thank you and I wish you all the best to, in whatever you do and be a successful eco-warrior and environmental warriors. Be the change. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much, much ma'am.